In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, something that happens to me these days, far more than it ever used to, is that people like to tell me exactly why it is that they don't believe in God. Sometimes it's because they mistakenly think that you have to choose between God and science. You definitely don't. But by far and away, the most common reason of all is to do with the problem of human suffering. It goes like this. I can't believe in a God who would allow it, they say, who would allow earthquakes, genocides, child rapes, gas chambers, chemical weapons, pandemics. I could go on. But it is allowed. It is allowed. On the one hand, there's the stuff which the planet does, the tsunamis, the volcanoes, the earthquakes. On the other hand, the collective stuff that humans do with machine guns, machetes. It occurred to me today that the coronavirus pandemic is a new and ingenious form of suffering where planet and people have worked together to unleash a new kind of destruction and pain. So suffering has been allowed and it is being allowed. What do we do with that? How can we make sense of it if God is supposed to be good? Well, whereas these days we've got unbelief as a respected option, ancient people perhaps took the existence of God as a given. And they just tended to think that God or gods were capricious. They needed to be appeased with sacrifices, adding yet more suffering and death into the mix, of course. Only in the Easter story, in Jesus Christ, is there a third way. A way in which the untold suffering of millions can be reconciled with a good and loving God. All that untold suffering and the glorious love of God meet together on the cross. Throughout this week, we've been hearing that story. We've heard about Jesus' judgment on the forces which block human flourishing. And yesterday we saw the depths to which he would stoop to set us free from them. And one aspect of the whole of Christ's incarnation, his time here on earth, his human life is about freedom. The freedom that comes from seeing what God's like for yourself, from hearing the stories of him. And that sets people free from those unhelpful images of the punishing, demanding God who doesn't care. There's a quote that I really like. You've heard me say it often. It's from the Franciscan Richard Rohr. Jesus didn't come to change God's mind about humanity. He came to change the mind of humanity about God. Well, on Good Friday, the work needs to be finished. There is one more part of the incarnation, one more vision of God to be seen, one more barrier that needs to be blasted away in knowing him, the barrier of suffering, pain and death. If you've been following along with the Stations of the Cross, maybe on the app this week or in the booklet, that we sent out. We hope that you've found the paintings there thought-provoking. They're by the German priest and artist Sieger Koda. And we bought a set of those stations for church last year. The children from school really enjoyed using them. And we were going to have them in our churches, but unfortunately, obviously, we, we couldn't do that. Well, this afternoon, we're scheduled to make four stations between Jesus being crucified and leading up to his death on the cross finishing at three o'clock. Now, you may have noticed that there's no picture for the 11th station, the one where Jesus promises the kingdom to the penitent thief, the two criminals who were crucified alongside him. One of them rejected him and one accepted him. Actually, the reason that there was no picture was just for practical reasons. I couldn't find anything and Sieger Kurda hadn't painted one. So I was going to find one today and post it up on the app, but I'm not. I'm going to invite you to pick up a mirror. 
I want to invite you to look at yourself and then to be in the picture yourself. To imagine that you are the penitent thief, just for a moment. To imagine that you have walked that path with Jesus. Be there just as you are, as yourself. The penitent thief may not have done very much to have been hanging there. After all, Jesus had done nothing but tell the truth. Perhaps the thief may have even been more sinned against than sinning. Perhaps he had no means of support other than stealing. Perhaps he was brought up on the streets. Perhaps not. Perhaps he liked stealing things. It doesn't matter. All that matters is that you bring yourself there, just as you are, to see. Whatever you have suffered in your own life, whatever you've lost, whatever you could have suffered in your worst fear, like you, Jesus is suffering unbearably. The Romans who surround you are experts in the machinery of death and creating the maximum amount of pain for the maximum amount of time. As you look at Jesus, you know that he has shared every possible part, every single aspect of suffering. All your fear and desperation that you've ever felt, like Gethsemane. The sheer helplessness in the face of violence and power. The mockery and scorn of the crowd and their hunger to hurt you. The loss of family and friends, of all that you hold dear, and even the loss of faith. Nakedness, humiliation, betrayal, injustice, of false condemnation, imminent death. Whatever you have gone through in your life, the worst that could happen, you know now that so has he. Yet when you look at him, where there should be a voice shouting curses at the guards, you hear a plea for forgiveness. Where there should be a body fighting to resist death, you see it embraced. Where there should be a face scrunched in agony, turned inward on itself. Instead, you see his face turned to yours. Eyes that don't judge you, but see right into you. You are fully seen all that you have ever been and done. And his eyes hold you in a gaze of love. Above his head, you see that sign that Pilate put there, which proclaims him King of the Jews. And you know that it is true that this is the Messiah. And in that face you see Jesus dying there on the cross. 
is not just one more human dying, one more pointless, painful death. In him, God is sharing it. Not shunning any part of the world that he has created or any part of the lives of people, but descending to where you are, the depths of the worst pit that you could be in, holding out his arms to you, embracing you and leading you out. And as he offers you a place in his kingdom, as he beckons to you, hope and healing and joy spring up within you. And then he dies. The sky blackens, all becomes dark. But something happens as the soldiers come to check that he is dead. They put a spear in his side. Out comes blood and water, streams of water, the water of new life. And so as we sit, let us pray the collect for Good Friday. Eternal God, in the cross of Jesus, we see the cost of our sin and the depth of your love. In humble hope and fear, may we place at his feet all that we have and all that we are through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs>